Hello. Wild Shot Snow Wolf here with our second episode of Wild Explaining the Furry Fandom. And this episode, we're going to talk about terminology and what to expect in furry gatherings. I look weird wearing orange. It's not really my color. We sure were very creative in even what to call some things in our fan base. Some are even punny. <laughs> I'll just go right down to it word and definition style. Okay, okay. So, um, a fan of funny animal arts is called a furry. A fan of funny animal art, but more for reptilian characters, or reptiles, is known as a scaly. A fan of funny animal art, but more for avian characters, are either called avi or featheries, but most of us just call them verbs. A fan of funny animal art, but is older, and there is no set age limit to this is called a gray muzzle. I mean, I, I think I'm a gray muzzle. I feel pretty old. Heck, you could be like 70 years old and you don't have to call yourself a gray muzzle. A person who seeks no interest in fan base groups or just is like unaffiliated at all is considered either a non fur or a mundane in, in our group. I mean, those are going to be terms you're going to be hearing, but I mean, most people would just call them normies, normal people, um, playing people, boring people. I like boring people. That sounds a little more interesting. A persona slash character is called a fursona, T-E. A mascot style costume is called a fursuit. A popular figure in our fandom is called a popufer. A character with two species integrated together is called a hybrid. A character with more than two species integrated together is called a sparkle dog. Don't ask me why. Now you're often going to be hearing the word anthro in our fandom and generally anthro me means uh, um, a subject who could walk and talk like a human being, whether or not the, the subject is humanoid or just a fox could stand upright and use his paws as workable hands. I mean, anthro is just a loose term. We, there, there's, there's like, it, it's just, I don't know. I don't personally like using the word anthro. I mean, it's confusing. So that's pretty much it. Those are the very basic terms you'll commonly hear and hear mentioned in the fandom. It's not hard and not much to remember. Now let's, all, now let's talk about gatherings. Furries make their gatherings not too different from any other groups' gatherings. I mean, other than seeing fursuits and people talking about random stuffs, they're normally super casual. I mean, I mean I'd go to a place and like uh, we, we go to a hangout or something. And there's always going to be this group of people like playing Smash Brothers or whatever on, on Nintendo and the, whatever system it is nowadays. And there's always going to be the cool guys over in the corner vaping and uh, talking about awesome DSLR cameras or GoPros or whatever. And motocross. I don't know. Whatever's cool with them. I don't think you're going to find the nerd group that's like over in the other corner talking about superheroes and Marvel and Capcom and whatever the heck. But anyway... A typical furry meet and greet, or fur meets, takes place in many different locations like a park, a lake, someone's designated house, or a public zone where the staff who runs such a zone is totally fine with masked figures.
Valentine's Day? Or more like Valentine's evening? It's kind of late. Nose move. Mandatory nose move. Did I hit the camera? No? Okay. There you it. go. You, I think you got it somewhere in there. Yeah. Mm. You, you just nose with yourself? What? You nose with yourself? Yeah. Uh, okay. Unless you want to hold it and then I nose move it again. Oh, I don't know if I can do that when I pause. <laughs> you're, you're just basically tapping the camera on their nose. It's the same thing, right? I guess. <laughs> I think I got a card from a Tobo, but I gotta find him. I wonder where he is. A typical furry party is just like most dance clubs. It's dark, it's loud, with, with loud electronic music, glow sticks. If there's like a bar in there, then it has to be, it has to involve IV checks because it's alcohol, duh. You, you get the deal. There aren't many of these furry parties because it's a real treat to have a party club be okay with masked figures. Because, you know, security reasons. But the ones that do exist are usually a lot of fun if you're a real party animal. You can always be like me, chilling in the back with earplugs, refusing alcohol because I drive and, to be honest, I'm not really much of a drinker as it is. Or you'll usually just find me on the dance floor because... I just like the way gloves fit to pretend I know what I'm doing, woo! And finally, a typical furry convention is like any other convention. You'll find a dealer's den, a gaming room, panels and events. Go. Oh no. I failed. Ball. Oh. It's happening again. <laughs> I hope all that gives you better insight and maybe a little less shyness to try one of these things yourself. Maybe you'll click on maybe you'll click with someone who has similar interests as you. I mean or, or maybe you'll be like me, just chilling in the back, not talking to a soul, sipping the provided Mountain Dew. Back when I could drink something like that. I drink water now. Hey, take your time. I mean, like, if you if it takes you a bit to like open up and socialize and stuff, then that's fine. I mean, I, I'm a timid introvert, so like socializing is not really something I like doing anyway. So you're, you're fine. Don't worry about it. You're cool. We we like you who you are. 
Tune in next week because in episode three, we'll cover fursuit etiquette, which are the basics of how to properly and respectfully interact with a fursuiter safely for both you and said suitor. Because some of these things are just super expensive. Or who knows, maybe you might startle the guy and he might just punch you in the face. I mean, we really need to cover that. Safety. See you. Bleh.